Deadly Tarantula Girl coming to you from the Texas Reptile Expo, the July show in Arlington, Texas. And I'm delighted to be back with SNS and Sir Eric, the six banded armadillo baby. Tell us about him, Suzette. He is two weeks old. He's a captive bred baby, captive bred and born. And he's a six banded armadillo. They originally come from South America. And he's only two weeks old, doesn't even have his eyes open yet. <laughs> Still on a bottle, as you can see, he wants to suck. <laughs> so he's sucking on mama's finger. Aww. He thinks I'm mama, so. Very, well, you are his I mama. I am his mom, that's all he knows, ever since he's been born, so. So cute. So it, what's the story with the name Eric? Eric is kind of the person that <laughs> bred him. That's, I named I him after see. Eric. <laughs> is he your first six-banded armadillo? He is my first. I had three-banded and I've had several three banded, but this is the first six. Wow. So, which so, is pretty awesome. So I know that you're keeping this animal to raise as your own pet, but tell me a little bit about their care and captivity for other potential armadillo owners. Well, they need a pretty good sized space because they, they like to dig, so you want to do them outside and give them stuff to dig in, give them like lots of dirt, sand. We do like a garden mix where they can, you know, oh, dig okay. and kind of feel like they're still kind of a wild animal, mm -hmm. even though they're raised in captivity, but we try to make them feel as wild as they want to be. Right. And he'll always stay sweet. Of course, you can see his, the claws and everything where he can really dig the nails. And I've already clipped his nails once since he's wow. been born. I mean, put your finger up and you can oh, see yeah. how he's, he's so strong. Away. And he just, he wants to always dig. <laughs> well, you're a little And then right kids. now, like his, what you call the shell is kind of soft, but this will harden up as he gets older. Wow. So right now we keep it kind of like greased up and so it doesn't ever dry out and crack or anything. He's but as it hardens up, you don't have to do that anymore. He's still on a bottle now. What type of diet will he have when he's a little bit older? He'll do like a rodent block diet like you would with rodents. And then he'll eat fruits and vegetables. And you probably do like mealworms and crickets, stuff like that. Now, how well do they bond to their owners? Very well. Wow, look at that little tail. They, he, they look like a little science fiction creature. Right. Strange. It looks like a mammal with a shell <laughs> like a tortoise. <laughs> Very interesting. What, what family are the armadillo from? Like, what are they related to? Um, I think they would be like any kind of like in the insectivore, they're going to be like in the rodent family, of course. But they're, because out, out in the wild, they'll eat, they'll dig and eat bugs and slugs and snails and probably frogs, anything that they can catch. Are, they are omnivorous though, they yes. also eat greens and they things. They do. Very interesting. Well, Eric, you're adorable. Touching this guy is kind of a strange sensation. At this age, as you said, he's soft, he will harden up, but he's kind of rubbery. Leathery, yeah. rubbery. Very interesting. Now, has his texture changed? He's two weeks old and you've had him for a week. Has his texture changed? It has. In it's that already time? it already feels like it's hardened a little bit because when I first got him, it was real squishy. And you can see, like, you can even put your finger here. It's like, kind of like a flap. Yeah. And, and the flap right there, you can see, is kind of hardening up. And yeah, then I don't know what's going on right now. but his, I know. His body, like his legs and belly, feel almost like latex or something. Right. I know. You're and looking. And his belly's real soft. If yeah. You, you can feel the little hairs coming on the belly. <laughs> I know you're looking for a soft cozy place huh are you cold well word on the street is you have another cute and cuddly critter that we might be able to meet I sure do now introduce oh this precious baby and tell us about this little one this is little kinky this is a kinkachu it's actually a South American raccoon Whenever they actually first discovered him, they thought they were in the lemur family. But since then, they've discovered that they're not really related to lemurs at all, and they classified them in the raccoon family. Wow. So this is one of our babies that we produced. She's nine, nine weeks old now. And she's actually pretty interesting because we have a group of pides. Uh-huh. So if you look, she's got white fingers. Mm -hmm. And we're thinking that this may be the... First one produced in captivity 
that's actually a pie. Oh wow. So we're hoping to make, you know, bigger pies, yeah, mosaics yeah. or wow. you know. So she's probably a keeper. That's incredible. So tell us a little bit about Kinkajou Care in captivity. Well, like with them, they're kind of like in the monkey family. You want a big outdoor enclosure. They like things that, you know, they can swing on. They like lots of limbs and just climby things. You can do swings. You can do all kinds of bird toys, like big McCall toys, stuff like that. They eat fruits, vegetables and say monkey biscuits, they'll eat dog food, stuff like that. They're pretty much like a raccoon, so they'll eat anything and everything. They're not really meat eaters at all, but I mean, I'm sure if somebody raised them on meat, they would yeah. eat it, but that's not really their forte. She's making a little tiny, almost a chirping sound. What other kinds of noises do they make? Usually that's all they do, is they kind of do the chirping yeah. and little thing like that, like a little barking. She's doing that right now because she knows it's time to eat again. Oh. She's like, because I'm on a schedule. Mama's got me on a schedule. But she's probably one that we're going to keep since, like I said, it's one of the first ones oh, yeah. produced like oh, yeah. this. Does she have a name yet? We just call her Little Kinky right now. Oh. Say, we, we haven't decided exactly what my name's going to be for good. And we're starting to do like birthday parties at SNS now. Oh, are you? So we're, you know, raising some of the good animals for like ambassador animals right, right. to always have where people can come and pick. And I partied with a kinkachu for my birthday. Yeah. So. Uh, I'm noticing that her ears are turning independently. Right. It seems like they hear really well. She does. And very also, well. I know there's something special about their tail. They have a prehensile tail. And actually, when they get bigger, they'll actually hang upside down from the tail. She's not so strong right now. And they probably freak her out, but there you go. <laughs> See, I can still do it though. Yeah. And it's fully prehensile. So, I mean, wow. they'll, what they'll do is they'll get up on a limb or mm -hmm. something and then they can reach out and do other things. Wow. And she is incredible. Now, other than the little white patches, is this a normal kinkajou coloration? Yes, this would be this would thing? be yeah the golden brown color, and actually another name for the kinkajou is called the honey bear, oh. and because they in the wild they like to get the honey, oh. and even in captivity we can give them honey and stuff and they love it. Wow! But you can see like the little white coming even yeah. through the skin there, and normally that would all be really dark. Oh, she's beautiful. Well, Suzette is also a world famous pioneer in sugar glider breeding. So of course she has a beautiful diversity of sugar gliders here, as well as caging dry goods and some other amazing animals. Let's take a look at those. So this one, this is probably one of our first color morphs that we actually started. And this is called a Cremino. And as you can see, it has a little cream stripe. It's got red eyes. But this, this is called a Cremino. Oh, beautiful. So that, that's one of the first color morphs that we got into. And then this is a Cremino. Oh, okay. You can see it's got the stripe. They're making this noise because they are nocturnal. So that's the reason they're making the noise. This one here Ooh. is a little platinum. Beautiful. This is called silver bell platinum because they got more of a silver color. And then I've got another white one in here. It's called a leucistic. And this has actually got the black eyes. See how the other ones had the red eyes? This is solid white with the black eyes. Did we wake you up? <laughs> Sounds like a little lawnmower factory. <laughs> <laughs> put in the neighbors too. And this is another, this Ooh. is a mosaic. And we do lots of mosaics. I mean, mosaic could have one spot of white on them and still makes them a mosaic. We started off with three little white tips of hair white on the tail to the solid white tails. Wow. 
And another characteristic with the mosaics is they have four white hands and feet. Mm. See how the hands and feet are white? Your other gliders don't have that. Yeah. They have the dark hands and feet. You notice how every one of these are crabby, crab, mm -hmm. crab, crab. Okay, this is one, I actually, when I traveled to Indonesia, oh, wow. we actually found these and they come from a different island and they're called, these are called caramel sugar gliders. Oh, really? And these are some that I imported myself from 2009. Oh, wow. And I started breeding them, so I've been working with them since then. Even the parents are like this, they don't crab, they don't bite. So is These that actually, it's a different subspecies and they actually get twice the size of our normal gliders oh, wow. in captivity. So is that a Maruki? It, this, yes. They come from the Maruk Island. Wow. And then since then, we brought in some from the Sarong Island and Nabir. So we've, we've got several different varieties from Indonesia. Nice. That's a beautiful So like beauty. all of these, I mean, we have the founding stock, so I mean, we can go back to, it was from that tree in Indonesia, wow. and they're all on record in Indonesia, plus here in the United States, that they know exactly we have them. Wow. That's incredible. And I love that you don't make a living out of importing animals. You bring in some stock. You study them, you learn about them, and you reproduce them, which right. is really responsibly what we should all be striving for. You're a shy little one, aren't you? Oh my goodness. So how old is this, Joey? That one is uh, eight weeks out of the pack. Oh my goodness. You are precious. But there's something new that... <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be a great shot. They are arboreal, so they will jump and climb. Be prepared for that if you're gonna spend time with sugar gliders. Oh my goodness. So beautiful. They do have big ears and large eyes because they are nocturnal. And they actually have a membrane that goes from the front foot to the yes. back foot if, if you do it out. It kind of looks like a parachute. Yes. So when they're gliding, they can actually glide 150 feet in the air. And of course, you know, in captivity, we're not going to give them that much room. But if they had that much room, they could go. Yeah. And they actually will use that. And they look just like a parachute yep. going through and the air. And they do like to jump and fly even in captivity. Just they do. usually it's from like the top of a bed or right. <laughs> a closet Or person door. to person. Yeah. Or um, if, you, if they have a large enclosure, they do like to jump across it. And, and that's what and people always say, well, what size should we build a, you know, for a sugar glider? Mm -hmm. And I always tell them, as big as you can afford. Yeah. Because the bigger, the better. They yeah, like it big. They do. I mean, it's like us. We don't want to be in an apartment. We want to be in a big house. Right. And they're the same way. They don't want to be shoved in an apartment. Yeah. So, bigger is better with sugar gliders. So this is, I would say, a higher maintenance pet that's probably not good for very young children because they are so small, they can be fragile, and they do need daily care. And so if you're interested in keeping any of these beautiful animals, you can always go by the SNS Exotic Shops in Houston or check out their website or uh, any of the expos that they attend. And a lot of times it's the owners themselves that are vending and they are amazing ladies. And they have a semi prehensile tail, not completely, right. like the kinkajou, but they do use it to hold on and for balance. And I am in love with this baby. <laughs> yes. You're just sweet. Oh my goodness. Beautiful, beautiful. And one characteristic with the uh, the caramels, mm -hmm. you see how he always curls mm -hmm. his tail? And that's what they do. And, and none of your normal gliders ever do that. I've not seen So that, that was something that we, whenever we're studying them and stuff, yeah. we're like, wow, that's weird. Because it's something about them huh. that, I mean, they just sit up in the tree. But I think because they get so much bigger. Oh, yeah. And they just sit up there and maybe it makes them look bigger. Hmm. 
interesting. But you haven't heard him crab yet, have you? No. And this is the way all the parents are. I can bring out the parents, and they're so much bigger, I can just like put them on my oh, shoulder. Wow. And they'll just sit there like, okay, we're hanging out. And I mean, this is something that came from the wild. Wow. I mean, not this baby, but right. mine. Mm -hmm.